we're live. Check test. Yeah, I'm just I'm setting up some of this stuff, guys, before I start working on these uh, programming challenges. At the same time, um, I'm answering any questions that you may have. Uh, for me, it's kind of my office hours where I can actually do stuff. Uh, with my channel and answer questions and stuff so I'm looking over here at my other laptop uh, as I'm uh, opening up these windows for these different um, these different platforms that I'm streaming to I'm streaming to uh, Facebook YouTube and Twitch uh, let me just type something in here. Let me see how that looks on the deal over here. All right. So this first challenge is for chapter ten. Uh, string linked. Write a function that returns an integer and accepts a pointer to a C string argument. So let me get some uh, preliminary stuff out of the way. Pound include. Uh, using. main return zero cool so let me make the chat a little bigger chat box font let's say 30 Right, see what that does. Okay. Questions or comments, guys? Uh, be sure to leave them below. That definitely helps out. So write a function that returns an integer and accepts a C string as an argument. Okay, so let me just write the function prototype up here. Integer, it's going to return an integer. And then Let's see, let me click on this real quick. Okay. And let me just put the parameters in there. So it's gonna take one parameter, it's a, it's a C string, a pointer to a C string, so I need a char pointer and yeah and it says the function should count the number of characters in the string so right here it says the function should count the number of characters in a string and return that number All right So I'll just name it uh, count count number of char uh, chars, yeah, just like that. And then 
So I'm just going to hop down here underneath the main and put the de de function definition for that count number of chars. And then I'm just going to name this uh, C string. And it's going to return. What is it going to return? Return. Uh, it's going to it's going to return a count. And then I'm just going to create that variable here, and initialize it to zero. Because uh, I imagine it's going to keep a running total um, as the program persists. All right. So the function should count the number of characters in the string and return that number. Okay, so I want to iterate through the C string and I'll say while uh, C string up uh, the how do I get the address? Or other value so while C not equal to a null pointer um, then the count is going to increment by one Okay. Uh, what happens if I put count in here? Let me see. Because count is zero. Just do that. All right, so let me hop up to the main function. You see, demonstrate the function in a simple program that asks the user to. So, ask the user to input a string, pass it to a function, and then display and return the value. So, those are the three main things I have to do. I'm just going to paste this in here, comment it out, and then get rid of that. So the first thing is ask the user, so enter a string with no more with uh, size minus one with blank characters. All right. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna receive that input into the input. What does it say? Uh, user string. I just call it the user string. And up here, I need to create those variables. So let me tab that out. So the size is a constant integer and let's say I don't know what 18 characters would be the max or actually 17 characters because I'm creating a character array called user string and I'm going to pass the size in there. And 
I want them to enter the size minus one, which is 17 characters, because I want because it's gonna add the null terminator uh, after its input uh, from the user string. All right, cool. So this gets the information from the user. Let me erase this. And then I need to pass that user string to the function count number of chars user string. Okay. Yeah, I can pass user as, so this doesn't have to be a pointer. Uh, because if I pass just the array, it it, it passes the first address of that pointer comes down here, and then it gets the value that's inside there, and then count is then incremented. Oh, how do I get the value? Hey, what's going on, AJ? Appreciate you checking it out. Uh, let's see, what am I doing here? All right, so I'm leave that there, and then let me just hop down here to the display. Display the function's return value. Um, so I want to set this count number of chars equal to an integer, and call it. Uh, number of characters and then here I'm going to display that uh, user string has number of characters user string has that many Cool. All right. Just put another line break at the end. Put a line break right here. Formatting. And let me just run it and see what happens. Oh, let's put this terminal over here. You guys got any uh <laughs> if you have any questions or comments let me know uh nevek draw says uh no homo <laughs> but you have a really soothing voice i appreciate that i appreciate that this i had this microphone for a while i got it at radio shack you remember radio shack i don't even think it exists anymore uh but that's how long ago i got this microphone and uh it's been doing me good all right, so uh, I'm compiling this program. You got a question or comment? Let me know, y'all. I'm just kind of working through these programming challenges uh, for chapter ten. As I'm waiting for people to come in, and if if you have questions, you can ask questions. If not, you can watch watch along or whatever. Enter a string of seventeen characters. All right, user string has seventeen characters. Uh. Let me try this again. Let me just put uh, was that five, six characters? Cool. String has six characters. Nice. All right. So I got that programming challenge out of the way, and I was playing around with this while loop here using pointer notation. Um, it's short. Uh, I was thinking of.
a different way that I can do it. Let me see. So I'll say while uh, C string equals count, which is basically array notation of the Yeah, uh, yeah. So that I think I think that would work. Let me see. Let me run it. Yep, six characters. Cool. All right, let me get rid of this. Move on to the next number two. Backwards string. Write a function that accepts a pointer to a C string as an argument and displays the contents backwards. All right. Get this stuff out of the way. Include IO stream Hit main. All right, and let's see what else. So we need a function that accepts a pointer. Okay, so and is it what is it going to return? Is it a void function? Let's see. A function in a program that asks you to input a string and then passes it to a function. So it's just a void function. And what is it? What I call it? Uh, reverse array. And then, so it's a character to a pointer. All right, so that's a, pro a prototype. And then, we just come down here and make the definition while I'm at it. Uh, view ID. And name it C string. So I need to iterate through, let's see for instance, so I'm going to output uh, each element, uh, I, Right, so what well, for loop? Just try a while loop and see what happens. Oh, let me see. Hold on. What if I do this? C string uh, is not equal to null terminator. And then I'm gonna put that C out here. Let me just, I think I need curly braces. Uh, so it needs to go backwards. Let's use a for loop. And I'm gonna iterate as long as C I equals maybe I need to pass the size of the C string accept a pointer to a C string as an argument and displays displays the contents backwards. Sterling, maybe I can use Sterling string length. Uh, and get the length of it 
and I'll start from there and decrement. So if I'm using a while loop, and I'll say, uh, C string is not equal to, I can't go up to the null terminator though. So I'll just use size. As long as I is uh, greater than, so right here I'm gonna put size. about C Sterlin How about that as long as that is greater than zero greater than or equal to zero I minus minus and then I'll put the value in C string see what that does okay, sorry my question is for a different program if that's okay uh, I don't know how to double a number and loop it in Python for example 1 to 2 4 to 8 and 16 so double each number up until something Oh, um, so like, so like, if you have a, a number, so like, say number one through ten, and you want to double each number, is that what it, you mean? Sounds waking up. So if you mean like that, then here I'll just I'll just do it down here. So what you want to do is like say you want to go from Hold on, guys. I gotta take a quick break, real quick. My my son's waking up. I gotta attend to him real quick.
I'm sorry, man. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm explaining this whole thing. You not even. You can't even hear me. Okay, so right here, this is input from the user, um, and it's going to be stored. The input's going to be stored in the in this variable called user input. I'm writing in C++, but it should be able to transfer over to Python, right? So that this variable is going to have the user input. And the for loop is going to iterate from zero up until the user input. So, say if they use five, then it, this is going to iterate five times. Okay. And then, so you want to take the number one, like say, so I, if you say I times two that's gonna equal zero right because the first iteration is I so you don't want zero as the first number because it's zero based so you want to say I plus one and it takes and so this is basically gonna equal one times uh, two and that's the first iteration right and then the next iteration the the i is going to increment so the next time i is going to be 1 so the next one is going to be uh 2 because you have 1 plus 2 so 2 times 2 and then the next one is going to be 3 times 2 and the next one is going to be 4 times 2 and the last one of course is going to be 5 times 2 because in our, in our example the user enters 5 so here's the the first iteration which is 1 times 2 which is basically this right here this is one, 1 times 2 and then the next iteration is 2 times 2 and next is 3 times 2 next is 4 times 2 so on and so forth but this is called a uh, <laughs> but this is called a user defined for loop uh, that's that's the key um, it's called a user defined for loop or or user defined loop hopefully that I hope that helps um, let me let me see that pennies for pay let me see if I can I have a github repository where I have all those Python programming challenges in them uh, a lot of people don't know about it um, but you guys know <laughs> so uh, right here's my go to repositories right here Python starting out with Python and then uh, I don't remember which programming challenge it was. Programming exercises. Let's see. Pennies for pay. Did I do pennies for pay in Python? I don't remember. Pennies for pay. Pennies. Oh. Yeah, here it is. Chapter 5. Yeah, I did it in C. So let's go to chapter five. Uh, programming challenges. What is it? Number seven. Here it is. All right. So yeah, here's that for loop right here. So this is this is also a user defined for loop because number of days is was here entered by the user. All right. So that's that's the main thing I would say it's a user defined loop and then inside of here you're gonna you're gonna this is where you're gonna manipulate the stuff so like I said over here if you wanted to take um, I would just take the I and, and multiply that by two every time it iterates and make sure if your loop starts with zero that you want to add plus one for each iteration Say if you're starting at one, two, three, four, five. Remember, it's zero based. I hope that helps.
<laughs> yeah. I can understand being stuck on a problem for a while. Uh, it's normal. Especially especially if you like you but you studied like so much it and you need to put it down. Uh that happens too. <laughs> All right. Questions or comments, you guys, if you're just joining or if you're still here, let me know. So are you working on that problem in uh, Python? Like, are you taking a class for Python or? Just curious. Let's see. So I need to get rid of this. Reverse array. So I reverse the array. And excuse me. So inside the in main, I want to create a new create a new array. Give it a size of uh, ten, and then char. C string and then uh, gravity I'll call it gravity and how many one two three four five six seven characters so I'll say the size is eight oh nice Taking a Python class. Nah, don't worry, man. Just don't feel bad asking. It's all good. I like help. I don't mind helping out if if I'm around. You know, sometimes I'm busy. So I mean, that's why that's why I do this live stream because it's my only time to really help out. Um, to help y'all out on things like this. All right, so reverse. And I'm going to pass the C string. And here goes nothing. Let's try running this sucker. Crash. Cool, no errors. A dot out. Uh, right. G -g 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 -g. So it's only outputting the first letter. Uh, and I need to start from the last letter. Okay. How do I start from the last letter? Maybe I'll. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I can do this backwards. So, uh, okay, let me just do this. C string plus I. Got the YT one two three four five six yeah cool I got it nice yeah one two three four five six seven. So I'm going to make this a constant uh, because, because it's not being changed. I don't want it to be changed. All right. And let me just.
Uh, how many programs you know? How long have you been programming? Um, I think you're asking programming languages. I, I've I wouldn't say that I know them all the way. I I can tell you the ones that I've worked in. I've worked in uh, PHP. I've worked in uh, a little bit of JavaScript. PHP, JavaScript. Uh, py- a little bit of Python because I was working on that on that book. C plus plus, and some C sharp. So f- five five different languages I worked in. C++, I want to say that this is the, I, I know this one more than the other ones because uh, because of, as far as the language syntax and, and things that it's capable of doing, I've, I've know it, I know it a little more than the other ones. Um, the second one that I know more is probably be maybe Py, uh, not Python, PHP. And then after that would probably be JavaScript. And then Python and then C sharp would be like the last on the list that I know least of. Uh, And I've been programming on and off. Well, I've been programming since like 2015. Um, And it's like real patchy because I have a full time job and I have a family. So like if I condense it down maybe like maybe like a year maybe two years <laughs> from 2015 to 2021 um, I started like a website business when I first started learning so I, I've done a few websites that's why I know a little bit of PHP and JavaScript um, I started out in web development like HTML and CSS uh, through free code camp because I was wanting to make a career change, that's kind of why I got into programming to begin with. Uh, and then, I, and that's so why I started learning JavaScript first in Free Code Camp, and I was totally lost. HTML and CSS was rather was relatively easy compared to JavaScript, and so I was like, "Man, I'm stuck." So that's when I decided, "Well, I'm, I'll take a class at a community college," and do it. Really helped out a lot. And C++ was the language that we were learning. And as I was learning C++, then I was able to understand some of the JavaScript concepts that were trying that I was trying to learn. Uh, and I think it's a good language to start on because you, I like to understand what's going on behind the code instead of just typing it in, you know, and not and not knowing what's going on. I think that makes that makes a good programmer if you know what's going on. Uh, kind of behind the scenes instead of just copying and pasting or kind of winging it type of thing uh, so yeah, that's why I got into that's how I got into C++ through JavaScript and then I kind of started a web business at the same time um, I was learning C++ uh, C sharp I'm not C sharp CSS and HTML and JavaScript and that's when I got into learning PHP and then I started doing a little bit of PHP and then once I went down that route I started learning MySQL as far as how to connect to a database with PHP and then I took a um, a database class at the at the community college where I took C++ so that helped me with the MySQL uh, and PHP oh cool so how so you found my website through the Python challenges, I'm curious. Or, or did how did you find my website? Like, what were you were you searching for something on Google or something? I'm just curious. Count plus plus. Let me save this here. I'll count got to be set to zero. Whoa. Okay, 
gibt den Int. Nice. Alright, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, I was looking up some Python from cool. Nice, man. I appreciate that. I'm glad it helped. Um, there was a stint where I went to Python for a little bit because <laughs> one of my subscribers talked me into like doing it, which I'm real bad at like starting projects and not finishing them. <laughs> but I I've been meaning to get back to that one. I, I just kind of wanted to go more in depth with with the C++ because I wanted to start moving going into different languages and um, I don't know I'll get back on it soon but now that's and well the reason why she talked me into it because she made a lot of sense she was like um, she said because it was during the when the pandemic started I believe I think that's when it was or something like that something like that to that nature and she was like well there's a lot of people studying Python right now it's you know do some some of those programming challenges i was like oh, okay cool and that's when i cranked out i what i don't remember which chapters i cranked out i think it was like one and two or something uh i don't remember Let's see i think i have them right here starting out with python programming yeah chapter three yeah and dude it's 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 the it's I like the language because it's different from C++. Like, there's not, you don't have to use curly brackets. It looks a lot nicer. It doesn't look, it's not overwhelming to look at like C++. Um, and I, and I was, and I was flipping through ahead of in the book and there's some, uh, some stuff in there that that I'd never seen in C++ which it may be in there like uh what was it there's a certain types of data structures I believe let me see oh uh, yeah lists and tuples I was looking at that I was like what is this I, I don't remember seeing anything like this um And I think I saw something like a, like an array where you can use two different data types, or, or several different data types in there. I think yeah, I think that's a uh, a tuple or something like that. But I was like, oh man, that's pretty cool, you know? Dictionaries and sets. See that I, I hadn't seen that in uh, C plus plus. But I can't wait to get back to it. I like this stuff, man. I really like it a lot. Uh, so chapter four is next for me, which is the programming challenges are 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 similar um, to the one in C plus plus because the same guy wrote this book that I'm that I was looking at. Oh, are, by the way, are you going through this book, starting out with Python by Tony Gaddis? Well, probably, right? Because you 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 had found the um, my website. Sentinels, yeah. See, these these are have already been covered in uh, in C plus plus calculating a running total. I just didn't do the turtle graphics. Um, I kind of just wanted to stick to uh, the regular uh, stuff that I already went through C plus plus. That way, I can go through it relatively quickly. But even when I tried that, I was like, oh, there's some stuff in here that I'd never seen before. Condition controlled. Yeah, I think this is the chapter where you might find that user defined for loop. Calculator running total. Yeah, see, look, here's an example of how to square each number. But instead of multiplying by two, you can square each number. That's pretty cool. Calc 
account controlled. Here it is. I knew it was in there. Letting the user control the loop iterations. So this is basically like I was saying um, right here. So this in variable is entered by the user and then it's used within the for loop, the range, uh, within the for loop right here. The end variable is user defined. So if you're looking at your text in there, it's uh, chapter 4, uh, 4.3, and there's a space called uh, letting the user control the loop iterations. And then at the same time, it's calculating the square, which is basic, it's the same type of logic uh, as the one I was showing you earlier, where you multiply by two. So instead of getting the square, you just, you get, you can say, um, uh, times two or whatever rename that variable and then change this take one asterisk out to multiply instead of squaring it nice uh, oh the fifth edition cool I don't know what the edition is this is, yeah, it's the fourth edition. Cool. There's some changes like I'm noticing because in the C++ I'm using the ninth edition and the eighth edition kind of back and forth. And there's a lot of similarities and there's some new stuff added. I wonder how much new stuff is added to the, to the Python one. Yep. All right, so I got this over here. Cool. Done. <laughs> Write a function that accepts a pointer to a C string. As an argument, how long have I been streaming this? One hour. Cool, 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 cool. Six viewers. You guys got any questions or comments, man? Let, let me know. Now's the time. So sometimes I really don't have uh, uh, this time to, uh, to spend with you guys. So, ask away. In the meantime, I'm going to work on these challenges and I'm trying to get these out of the way. Uh, next, I'm going to be, let's see, Let me look ahead real quick, see where I'm at. Oh, here you are. So for chapter 11, I want to see what's up at, oh, structured data, yeah, finally, structured data, advanced file operations, classes, I'm probably going to do this whole book, man, I didn't think I was going to. Uh, one thing at a time. Write a function that accepts a pointer to a C string as an argument. Okay, get this out of the way. going to return a number uh, the number of words contained in the string so we'll return an integer uh, number of words I'll call it number of words and it accepts a pointer to a C string so a call is going to be a character 
pointer and I'm gonna, I'll just make it a constant because it's not going to be changed in the function it's going to be uh, it's not going to be changed so it's going to be iterated over and stuff like that hey you're welcome man no problem Oh, appreciate it, man. Thanks for subscribing. Yeah, man. Do, do, do his thing, man. I ain't holding nobody to anything, man. Just uh, do good, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. So number of words const char. And I'm going to name this C string. return uh, I'll just return count Go zero okay so demonstrate the function. For instance, the string, if the string argument is four score and seven years ago, the function should return the number six. Demonstrate the function in a program that asks the user to input the string then passes it to a function. Okay. So. There was an example that I was did earlier, and I think it's this one here. No, it's not that one. It's this one here. No, nope, it's not that one. This one here. Um, I think there's something called a delimiter, which let me see. Let me go back to the text. Uh, delimit yeah it's in uh, the ninth edition um, yeah right here the character that is used as a delimiter um, which is the second argument all right Yeah, it's got it's got to be here. That's what I'm thinking because hmm, I have to count. The I have to get the string, and so I guess I can look for the space, and for every space, count the count whatever's after it, or so, or whatever's before it. But that wouldn't make sense. I, I think the best thing would be to do that. Find the delimiter. Um, let me just Google this, see what happens. Um, find number 
of words in C string. Excuse me. Got the words in the C string. All right. Uh, using C string, how do you count the words? Please give an attempt at the code before asking. Uh, one always puts the points in the first letter of the string. Can you explain a bit more? the number of words in this string. Let's see what this does. Oh nice. This one looks good. Let's see. I got a character I got a, st a string of characters here. And then enter a string. Okay. So this holds the number of words and iterate through checking for spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you add one, two words. Hey, this looks not bad. I don't think I'll work with this. Um, so iterate through. So I'm going to iterate through. And every time. Move this over. Oh, dude, why did I do that? So I got the count in there. He calls it words. Um, I'm gonna so I'm gonna say while um, while the c string with count is not equal to the null operator uh, let's see string pointer oh yeah because it's going to be a pointer so plus plus uh, while the value in C string is not equal to zero uh, then add to string pointer plus plus at the end of every iteration or not string pointer C string All right, cool. So that's going to iterate through every one. And each time, and 
And this guy says if each time the C string or the value in the C string is equal to an empty space then the count is to be incremented by one and then it's gonna return count plus one like so so that's gonna return the number of words okay um, and then write a function that accepts a pointer first instance four score seven years ago demonstrate the function in a program that asks the user to input a string alright so I need to ask the user to input a string um, let me create a constant integer called size and that's gonna be what uh, we'll say 80 characters uh, plus which is including the null termi terminator and then I have a, a car a char array called user input and that's gonna be have to be 79 characters long So, what would I say? Enter a sentence. And then I'm going to use get line. And I'm going to have it go into the user input and then put size in there uh, get line I guess it's part of the uh, see oh there it is cn dot get line user so I'm gonna get that information from the user and then what am I gonna do the number of words string should be displayed on the screen so I'll say um, your sentence has a number of words the alright and let me just stretch this out over here Run the program, G++. Uh, dot A dot out. Enter a sentence. Uh, Hello everyone, how are you? One, two, three, four, five words. Cool. And that should work. I'm not sure if that's... I wanted to use this delimiter thing here. But it's, it's string tokenizing. Okay, look. Sometimes a string will contain a token of words separated by spaces. For example, black. The string contains the following four items. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this, try to do it this way. Uh, 
but this I mean this works just as well because it's 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 getting uh, it's doing the trick so it's doing its job as far as displaying the right information but I don't know a lot of times you don't really can't trust the user to enter the right information you know so I don't know if I can like I don't know If I enter something like that, you know, in one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. See, and it says six words. One, two, four, five. And I think that zero is throwing it off. Let me see if I just put all letters. One, two, three, four, five. See, yeah, that number throws it off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Or a semicolon or something. I don't know. Maybe there's a space at the end. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, maybe there was a space at the end. You never know. Ah, but anyway. All right, I think that's. I think I'm done with the live stream, y'all. I appreciate y'all listening and watching uh, this far.